million Hindus praying in the world right now. There are, we don't know how many Satanists praying because they don't want us to know about it. There's 1.9 billion Muslims praying in the world right now. There are thousands of cults praying, and there are 5 billion humanists praying to themselves. But God is saying, where are my people? Those people are praying everywhere, billions of them, and they mean what they're praying, but God ain't checking for that. He can only hear one prayer, his people. If you struggle in your prayer life, this is your season. This is the season of breakthrough. And, 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 and uh, weariness in prayer is not a, an exclusive thing. It, 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 it comes with the territory. There are times when uh, that, that everybody has to um, resist drought seasons in prayer for many, many reasons. But if you're struggling and if you need a breakthrough, this is the season. The current is flowing. Just get in the water. Stick your toe in there. It's not as cold as you think. You know, I, okay, no rabbit trails. <laughs> this is your season. Let me tell you something about prayer and, and probably the, a good way to start it. Um, know this, that, that there's different kinds of prayer in the scripture. And, and, and one of them is, is, is what I call one voice prayer, which means somebody is leading the prayer or not. But in this case, somebody's leading the prayer. But that person isn't praying while you listen. They're not on the stage and we're the audience. Everybody is praying. Now, in your minds, that might seem like cacophony, uh, confusion and, and mass noise. But it's actually symphony to God. Because God can hear each one of us individually at the same time praying what we are praying. And when we do it like that, that's the more answers we get. If you're praying and I'm praying, if, we, if we're praying for families and you're praying one thing for families and you another, you another, you another, and 100 people, 100, 200 people are all praying to God. All that stuff is coming up toward God and answers for all those different kinds of prayers are being released. So pray with don't don't just stand and listen that's your chance to get your feet wet ain't nobody thinking about what you praying ain't nobody watching you ain't nobody listening to you but god so that's your shot to start out with a whisper if you have to they pray for families god just bless families everywhere god and bless the families don't have enough and, but engage give god something to answer with your prayers That's different than the, than the traditional thought, which, which is not there. There were times when pr it was prayer, amen, prayer, amen, prayer, amen. Um, um, and so probably the way that we're most accustomed to is when the person's up here praying, you basically say what they say after it and agree with that prayer. This is something different. You praying what God is bringing to your heart. And it is God is never confused. He knows the difference between your prayer and your prayer, your voice and your voice, your journey, your journey. So we're going to pray together in this season. Amen. Amen. Acts 2.42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. And all came upon every soul, and wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing proceedings to all as, they, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Hover over your word, Holy Spirit, and give us your life. So today's message is entitled, the body, um, the body of Christ Devoted to Prayer, If. So th this devotion to prayers, um, everything mentioned here, those four things mentioned, there, devoted to the apostles' teaching, devoted um, to the fellowship, devoted to the breaking of bread, and devoted to prayers, are all uh, extensions of, of, of fellowship. They did these things together, and that was the might and the power 
of the early church. And they all took the yoke and began to plow. Everybody was excited about um, this newfound revelation of Jesus Christ being the Savior of the world. And they began to take up the yoke and they began to plow in the spirit and plow through whatever got in their way because they believed in this new life that they had. And the life that we have in Christ, just it, we can ne- it can never afford to become old or religious or just habitual. It is a vibrant, living thing. And if, 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 if you need a refreshing, then by all means, get one. Ask for one. We'll pray for you. But we need everybody's spirit fully engaged in what God is trying to do because we are the New Testament church. And so we're trying to move things forward in the spirit. And things changed. So now we, we've been on this journey. And last week we fasted. What, how, last week, last week before that, whatever it was. We, 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 we entered into a space through fasting and prayer. And, and, and last Sunday it culminated in this, this wonderful celebration. And what, what the thing that God is trying to emphasize is that's not just an event. It's not just a moment. It's a place we moved into. We've shifted somewhere, y'all. And we have to persevere in that place. I would counsel you to do some kind of regular fasting, be it a weekly fast, a monthly fast. Do something to maintain what you've gained and then to gain what still yet is before us. In this, in this world, in some of our families, in all of our families, there's something that's turbulent and up in the air and trying to figure it out. <clears throat> you know, we look at each other, and because we, you know, we look good on a Sunday or, or whatever, we look chill, our hands are raised like everybody else, look like everything's all together. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Everything ain't all together. You would be shocked what the person sitting next to you is actually dealing with. And, and I think those kinds of spaces relax us and don't realize the urgency of us standing with one another. Everybody in this room, person with the microphone to whoever's in the parking lot, has some uh, serious challenge in their life. Something that when they think about it, it causes them fear and discomfort. And they'd rather think about anything in the world other than that right there. And so you run and hide from that thought, but then you come back and that thought's still there. And so it's going to take the unified power of God (laughs) within us to realize uh, uh, God's nearness and to press into the blessings that he has for us now. With that being said, we also have things in our nation. We're in a very um, tentative place right now. <clears throat> and, for, and, for, and, for, and for justified reasons, and we're going to talk about this a little bit today. I have to. I'll be irresponsible not to. But in the final analysis of things, at the beginning of things, and the final analysis of things, we talked about this is Wednesday. The, the, the fact of the matter is God is good. Thank you. I, was, I, was, I knew somebody would chime in there. God is good. What? Period. Let's say it together. God is good. Period. Yeah. The goodness of God is not a conditional possibility. It's not a circumstantial wager. It is a relentless reality. God is good. God isn't good if, God isn't good when, God isn't good because, God isn't good except, God isn't good but, God is good. That's it. So when circumstances conspire against your peace, God is our refuge. Always. It never ceases to be that way. Thank you, DTA. Thank you for that right there today. (laughs) So that's something we have to realize, and we have to realize the way to access that goodness. If you remember Jehoshaphat, he was in a battle. We talked about this during the last season on fasting, and they got in some serious trouble. They ended up with with an army that they couldn't really deal with, actually two armies plus some other dudes, none of which they could handle, and they got in trouble, and they were faced with this. And the Bible says they began to fast, and they prayed. And so, so let me just say this. What fasting does is it supercharges your prayer. It's like driving with a four-cylinder 
engine. I had a, I had a Vega when I was in high school. Actually, my, it was my, mother, my mother's Vega. And it, I was easy to find because it was a yellow Vega that had a black stripe going over the top of it. It looked like a John Discunk is what it looked like. And it was four-cylinder. And then I think my next car was like a Grand Am or something. And it was six-cylinder. And then you beef it on up. This is like talking, taking a, 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 a four-cylinder and, and under your hood and then putting like a, a, a eight-cylinder Hemi or whatever the thing is called. The charges, both of them going to get you down the road. Both of them are transportation. The heat might work in both. But that one with that other special thing under the engine, when you hit that gas, it means something entirely different. <laughs> you can press this much on that Vega and you'll still be sitting still. You press that much on that him. Fasting is the supercharge for prayer. That's why Holy Spirit led that to happen just before this space of prayer that we're in. So I won't finish telling the story of Jehoshaphat. We, 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 we got to move here. But the bottom line is they couldn't deal with their enemy. The Bible says they fasted, then they prayed, and then God gave them a strategy. And that strategy was to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Magnify the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now they're singing this while it's dudes salivating for their necks. Can't wait to kill every one of them, take their people captive, and plunder everything they have. But in the middle of this, what was their focus? On God. God is good. His mercy endures forever. What? God is good. Praise the Lord, everybody, because his mercy endures forever. Why? Because they needed his mercy right then. So when we say God is good, we're saying to focus on that because that's what we need is the goodness of God. No, 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 no. We need to pick it. We need to march. We need to make some noise. We need to post. No, you need to remember that God is good. And then let his goodness instruct you what to do rather than your ire and your displeasure. So no or not, we had an election a few days ago, y'all. And, and, and we have to deal with this responsibly, and, and we know that we have to deal from God's perspective. And, and the fact is, everybody won't like God's perspective, but it is God's perspective. If we want God's power, we must embrace God's perspective. We talked about perspective last week. <clears throat> if we want God's power, we have to embrace his perspective perspective because he releases his power very responsibly so some of you rejoice over this fact and some of you don't but um we have a new president y'all we have a new president and y'all exercising good restraint right now some people want to throw shoes and be happy about it and other people want to break down and cry that's the reality in every election but the further we get into this U.S. story, those things are amplified, and, and, and they get more consequential. And so it, it, it's, it's, we have to talk about this. It's, 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 Tabernacle of David will never, <laughs> in this pulpit, endorse any president, candidate, or any, any kind of candidate, period. We don't do that. We can't even do that, really. It's not even legal for us to do that, and we don't want to do that. We want to pray for you, you to do your research, find out what things are, <clears throat> and let God lead you how to vote. But this is a perfect place to start a conversation about prayer because people tend to stop after what they think is, is over. But we just, we just stepped in. This is a, that was a threshold. We just got up into something. <clears throat> and, what we do, and, and all of it's unknown. We got some ideas. We got some patterns that maybe we think, okay, since that, 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 that. But none of us know really what's unfolding here. And so prayer is critical. Some people are very happy about the election results. Some people are very unhappy about the election results. But all people need to pray about the election results. <laughs> we can't divest because it went our way or did not go our way. We can't walk, a beer, we can't walk around uh, uh, saying, yeah, he's not my president. I'm, I'm counseling you today. I'm counseling you today. Because think it or not, in the United States of America, you need a president. Just pick a country who don't have one, 
and pick their lives over yours, and I don't think you would want to do that. So we have to pray for the one that we have. I'm not saying believe in everything. I'm not saying like everything. And you get to share your heart and say what you need to say responsibly. But I'm saying the dude at the helm, it was either going to be him or her. Either one that grabbed that helm, the church of Jesus Christ need to be showing up praying. Because they're steering the ship that we're floating in. Don't be like, that ain't mine. I'm done. I'm, done. I'm, 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 I'm through. No, 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 no. Because you're going to have the consequence of your doneness to live with. Don't get done now. <laughs> we need to get it started. So we have to, we have to pray um, to have God's perspective. We have to be positioned like he wants us to. To have the perspective like he wants us to. So we can flow in the power that he wants us to. Because we have power with God. Say we, we have power with God. Power. Say I, I have power with God. So, so just, just a few um, practical things. If things went your way, just know this is the difference between God and us because he knows he's good all the time. <laughs> and he ain't scared of nothing and nobody. God's not walking around beating his chest saying, yeah, yeah, I told you, my man, I don't know. God ain't doing that. No one is he walking around shaking his boots up. Oh, no, oh, no. Whoa, it's us. It's all over. That ain't God. Because God is always good. Period. And everybody needs to pray for the goodness of God to be revealed. I'm going to tell you what right now is, is, and we won't be talking about this all day, but I have to hit this. Um, And I won't be talking all day. (laughs) In our nation right now, there's either a false sense of security or an escalated sense of fear. depending on what side of the equation you're on. There's either a false sense of security or an escalated sense of fear, and both are incredibly unhealthy and dangerous. Because neither can see everything, and neither can see tomorrow, which is why both and all need to pray. Give me Luke eleven seventeen. 17. Let's, let's just let's talk, have this conversation. This is Jesus knowing their hearts. He told them every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction. And a house divided against itself falls. Division is the primary ingredient for failure. I'll say that again. Division is the primary ingredient for failure. James Dutton said, the meanest thing you can do to yourself is to hate somebody else. And though he's not a prophet, I I believe what he's saying. Because the place that I have to go inside of myself to work up hatred or disdain for someone else is a place that's reserved to give me life. It's a place where health should flow from, but I've surrendered a passion. I've surrendered my emotion. I've surrendered my thoughts. I've surrendered these things that are all precious in the sight and in the hand of God, powerful, and I've turned them toward an individual in a way that God would never look at them. There are people on the other side of whatever equation you're on, every last one of them God loves. Every last one of them God loves. Every one of them he has a plan for. Every one of them he has a blessing for. And us praying is the only thing that's going to unify this nation. God is going to show us how to pray, and then he's going to show us what to do. If it stirs up, if it or they stir up ire, if they stir up disgust, if they stir up hatred against people, then it's toxic and it's the devil. Hatred is of the devil. And it's the perfect distraction to squander your power on. Don't spend five minutes of your day thinking about how much you don't like somebody. 
Don't spend five minutes of your day thinking about those people, whoever they are. You're going to need that five minutes later on. <laughs> You're going to need that to have been sowed into the spirit. Because the Bible says, he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Don't put that seed in the ground. Don't let that come out of your mouth. Because it is a seed. So if you're living in that space, then your weapons are obsolete for this battle. Put those weapons down. Put down complaining. No matter how things are and how things turned out. Put down arguments. Put down the rhetoric. Put, out, put, put down the media brawls. Turn the channel. Put down posting for God's sake. Put down anger, pride, fear, and pick up prayer. Spend the however many minutes you did watching your favorite media outlet who is bent on some kind of agenda, period. They don't even have to tell the truth anymore, y'all. It's not a requirement. They get to lie. And yours is lying about something. I'm not saying don't stay informed. I'm not, listen, understand, I'm not, this is not dictation or some kind of whatever that might, you might think this is. But I'm saying be cautious. When you see them moving into that space, click. Because the only reason you turn to that channel is because you believe in what they're saying. And what the devil says, they say something good, 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 good. And then there'll be some, some poison wrapped up in one of them good pieces of candy and it's in your soul and you don't even know it. This is my counsel to you. Do not enlist in public war. Do not engage. Give me 2 Timothy 2, 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I say again, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about being apathetic or dismissive or blind. I'm saying be strategic. Pray, then talk. Pray, then act. Pray. And then don't post. Pray. <laughs> Unless it's going to be some love. Then some folk going to be mad at you and then you're going to want to go that other direction. But I'm saying pray and be responsible. Engage in the places you can to make your society better. Always. If it's in front of you and you have an opportunity and a responsibility, engage. Some of your jobs are like that. Some of the places God placed some of us strategically involved and necessitate us being involved. Do it with all your might and all the excellence that comes from the Holy Ghost. But good God, pray. Yeah. Don't let them suck you into a vortex of arguing and bickering. You remember the cartoons where it just be a cloud and it's, it's dogs or cats or something. Like that cloud just moving. All you see is every now and then a leg or something pop out about. <laughs> That's us in the spirit when we get involved with mess like this. The word entangle, it means to, to, to connect, to tie, to braid in, to interweave, to the point to where it's difficult to tell the difference. Somebody needs to be able to tell the difference between a child of God speaking on a matter and somebody who ain't a child of God speaking on a matter. And if I sound and act and behave just like the world, then I'm entangled in it. I've been braided into the, I'm, been, I'm part of the weave. I'm up in there. You can't tell the difference between what I got and, and what they got. If, if, if you get a good, good enough weave, they can't tell where your hair ends and the weave begins. <clears throat> I never had one, but ain't that a good one? Okay. You get a raggedy one? Mm-hmm. That's right there. That's where that, <laughs> mm -hmm, that's where that begins. devil want to give you a good weave so if we're talking too much then we're praying too little again I'm not talking about being apathetic I'm not talking about being dismissive or irresponsible 
you get involved wherever you're required to get involved and wherever Holy Spirit leads you to get involved. But you get involved like a child of God. You get involved like a child that knows God is good. And when I get done, some good is going to have happened. Some, some good is what's going to happen. It's not my opinion. It's going to be on the table. I didn't know. I got you, didn't I? No, 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 no. Something good. God has something to work with now. He said no man entangles us himself in the affairs of this life, <clears throat> that he may please him who's called him to be a soldier. So by identity, we are soldiers, and by assignment, we must fight. But we must fight right. Why fight for a kingdom in this world when you know your kingdom is not of this world? Again, do all the good you can. That's what Jesus did. Acts 10, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil, <clears throat> for God is with us. That's two specific things. And he went around, he said he was casting out devils, he was healing, but then the Bible says he was doing good. The Son of God, anointed with power, raised in the dead, casting out devils, feeding thousands, and doing good under the power and the anointing of God, doing good stuff. Rank, crank it up. Feed some people. In that crowd of people that you feed, every, every first Wednesday of the month right here in this parking lot, I think we're on 5.30 or so, it starts. come feed some people. There's going to be somebody, everybody in that crowd. People who voted different, people who live different, people who think different. Feed them people out of your own hands and do the goodness of God. Yeah. So, yep. So we have rights. Say we have rights. We have rights. And we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities. Some things you have the right to say, but you have the responsibility not to say. Amen. This is really important in this season. Some things you have the right to say, but the responsibility not to say. And it won't take any of us long enough in our own lives and our own experience to realize the devastation of somebody who didn't realize that fact. We have things that some parents have said to children, and it broke that child's spirit, saying what they had the right as a parent to say. But those words being indelibly etched in a child's mind still hounds their security right now. Some things people said to you way back when, a parent, a teacher who told you would never be anything, a friend, an old girlfriend or something. And sometimes those words just linger around in our hearts and, we, and, and they hound our self-worth. So we can't be the ones who release that kind of thing into the air, into the hearts of people, into inflamed situations. Our option is to pray. Pray before you walk into anything. It's in this season, pray before you walk into the grocery store. So you don't accidentally bump the wrong person with your cart. So you and them are not reaching for the Kraft macaroni and cheese at the same time. You don't, you pray. Division is the devil's kill shot. And if he can separate me from you, then he has neutralized both me and you. Because it takes me and you to win. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. So, so just because I have the right to say it, doesn't mean I'm right for saying it. Our rights must be counseled by our responsibilities. Our word, the Bible says we'll be judged by our words. The empty and operative words, the good words, the bad words, the fruit of our, the Bible says, out of the bunch of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when we say things and release them into the earth, we're releasing seeds. And God takes that very seriously. So we got to be careful how we talk in this season and consider how powerful you are and be responsible over your power before you say what you're about to say. Be responsible over your phone before you tap it in and hit post or send or before you send that text. Do you believe, is it you believe you're powerful? 
Okay, well, wait, wait, this is not, uh, the Bible don't say this, but um, uh, what you call his uncle said, um, with great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben, Spider-Man reference, never mind, don't worry about it. You're powerful, so you have to be responsible. You have to take yourself as consequential. You have to take it as if what I say may happen. As strong as I'm feeling this right now, it, what I'm, what's in my bosom right now is on fire. And when I release it, I release that fire into somebody's soul. You're powerful. So, it, and, and why am I talking about this? And back to this for a moment. Because our nation is divided almost in half. That's a big deal. And if you don't pray, it's going to be difficult to live in a world where half the nation is your enemy. And you don't find out until. Till you cut over up on somebody in front of the lane. That's why I said pray before you drive too. <laughs> pray, 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 pray. You, 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 we just don't know. And, 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 and when there's division, there's necessary things that can't get through. And time is coming when we're all going to need to put our differences aside and stand side by side. And we need to pray about that. Mm. So we're going to go past that and get to this right here. So why must we pray? And we'll be done here in just a couple minutes. Because pray we must. Two reasons. First reason, we pray because we need God. We'll talk about that more in the weeks to come. The second reason is we pray because God needs us. John Wesley said, It seemeth that without God, man can do nothing. But without God, without man, God will do nothing. Once again, he said, it seemeth that without God, man can do nothing. But without with God, without man, God will do nothing. Think about this. In a word, God gave Adam dominion over the entire planet Earth. <clears throat> and he came to him every evening to commune with him about the thing. He, he, and hear me right. He came into a world that he gave at Adam. So he came into Adam's world and communed with him about what was on his heart, about his world that God made. Remember that in a word, God created all the animals of the planet. And then God walked up to Adam and says, now you name them. And whatever you call them, I'll call them. Give me a little, little bit of liberty on this one. Remember that God made Adam a woman. He put him to sleep. And he made a woman. And then God woke him up and said, what's her name? God will not do this without us. God is a very, if you will, proud father who set up a situation where we would be dependent on him and he would be dependent on us the way he made things. Give me 22 and 29 of, of Ezekiel. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed uh, the need, poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that you should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before, the, for the, before me, before the land, so that I should not destroy it. God said, I, there was something inside of me that was boiling up, and I didn't want to do it. But I needed somebody to come to me and stand on my side and say, God, don't do it. I'm willing to stand in the gap. I'm willing to fill up the empty spot in the in-between. I'm willing to be your voice on that side and man's voice on this side. I'll take up the heads and fill in the gap. God needs us. To release his hand, sometimes to withhold his hand, God needs us. 
He's waiting for somebody to pray about it so he can do something about it. He's waiting for us. He's waiting for me. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for us to pray so he can move. Solomon's my last point here. Solomon, the anointed king as a young child, and went on to do exploits, and he built the temple of God, and it was a massive, massive undertaking. David had, God said to David, you're not going to build a temple, your son is. And so his son built the temple. And they built the temple, they dedicated it with great sacrifices. And the Bible says the fire and the smoke of the Lord was everybody, and they couldn't even go in the temple. Just, the presence of God just ran them out of there. I wouldn't mind that at all, y'all. If God just <laughs> sent me running down Holmes Road, running and screaming because his glory was too much to stand in, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind that at all. <laughs> Send me out here looking wild. And so when he built this, Solomon, out of the wisdom God gave him, began to pray because he knew that people were going to get it wrong. He knew people were going to mess up. He knew something tragic was going to happen. He knew people were going to be led astray. All these things that we all deal with all the time in life. And so, but he went to God. He said, God, listen, listen. If your people uh, go astray from you and begin to disobey the law and begin to do things that you told them not to do, um, if your people this, were called by their name, will turn themselves toward this temple and pray, will you forgive them? And then he went to another thing. God didn't answer the prayer till the next day. He went to another thing. He said, God, if they begin to worship idols and, and, and you begin to bring on them the pestilence and the things and begin to destroy the land like you said that you would if they don't obey you, if they turn toward this place and humble themselves to pray, will you forgive them and heal the land? And he went on praying and praying and praying. Everything he could think of that could go wrong. And he asked God, will you deliver us just the same? And then there was silence until the next day. And then First Chronicles 17 and four, 7 and 14 is God's answer. He said, and read this together with me. He said, yeah. stop, stop right there. Read that first word again. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. The first word. Yeah. That's the first word in this prayer. Yeah. If. Yeah. And that's where we're standing right now. If we pray, God's going to do some things that nobody thought he could. If we pray, God can turn the hearts of people or shut the hearts of people down. If we pray, God can turn our finances and our economic situation around without whatever. If. If is the condition. I don't move if you don't move. That's what God is saying. I won't do it if you won't do it. I created this world for you, and you got to participate in it if you want me to have anything to do with it. He said, if. If who? If who? One more time, if who? There are 520 million Buddhists praying in the world right now. There are 1.2 billion Hindus praying in the world right now. There are, we don't know how many Satanists praying because they don't want us to know about it. There's 1.9 billion Muslims praying in the world right now. There are thousands of cults praying, and there are 5 billion humanists praying to themselves. But God is saying, where are my people? Those people are praying everywhere, billions of them, and they mean what they're praying, but God ain't checking for that. He can only hear one prayer. His people. We need to pray, y'all. He's waiting and listening for your voice. You are his people. And do you realize the magnitude of that one reality that God hears you? The master of all creation hears you when you pray. Feeling bad ain't prayer, y'all. 
Feeling low ain't prayer. Feeling sad ain't prayer. Being afraid ain't prayer. Being ashamed ain't prayer. Feeling unworthy, complaining, none of that stuff is prayer. Prayer is about you opening up a place of communion between heaven and earth and you giving God the time and the heart and the sincerity in any given moment to move because you're asking him to move. Prayer is our primary weapon in this season. Put everything else down that's fruitless and pick up prayer and put it in that time instead. <sighs> you need to pray that people turn their hearts toward God. We need a whole bunch of people in this world turning their hearts toward God. We need to add to the prayer force. We need to add to the army. God give you an opportunity to say a word to somebody's house, say it. Pray for the people in your family who have not said yes. Pray to the people in your job who have not said yes. God wants to turn them around because he wants to hear their prayer too. He wants them to be his, my people. The challenge this week. Let's unify in prayer. Let's, we're going to start little and little and move this on up by finding a prayer partner. Um, just somebody. And I want you to pray with them twice this week. Did I mean twice? No. Three times, y'all, y'all, y'all. And it don't have to be long. We're not we're just however many minutes, however many moments. Just accept the challenge. Find somebody to pray with. <clears throat> if if you're if you're not that comfortable yet and, and you need to find a, 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 another duo and say, hey, can I, can I step in your group or team? But I want everybody to do this. And I want you to pray three things. The first day, it's what we prayed about here today. Pray for one another about a personal need. Consider who's there in your group. Whoever you are in the group, say, this is what I need. This is what my family needs. This is what we're going through. This is what's happening with my children. My job, just come up with your giving. Hey, you just right now, think of a, a personal need. Express that in the group. And y'all pray for one another as you all share your personal needs. And however long it takes to do that, mission accomplished. Second thing I want you to pray for is our nation. Let God lead you. Think about where you are. Be honest about where you are. This is confidential. Let me say it right now. This little prayer uh, 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 duo or trio is like Vegas. If it happens there, <clears throat> it stays there. If you need a minute to express your heart about how you feel about our nation right now, then say it. And then y'all together, just kind of take a moment and pray for the nation. I'd like everybody to pray. And the third thing I want you to pray for is Tabernacle of David. Pray, pray for our church in whatever way. You may see something already that you know needs prayer. Pray in that space. If, if, you, if, you, if you don't know anything, I ask Pastor Paul or I, ask our wives. We, we can, we can yeah, you pray about this right here. Those three things. Get in a small prayer group of two, three people. Pray about each personal needs. Pray for our nation together. And the third day, pray for Tabernacle of David.